Joining me now, Dr. Ostrowski and Dr. Leitner. Thank you so much for both of you being here today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So let's talk with you, Dr. Ostrowski. How widespread is the use of antibiotics without a prescription, not only here in the United States, but also internationally? You know, I think that's really a tough question because I don't think we actually really know because there are not studies that are going to be throughout the entire United States. I will say that Dr. Leitner and her group put something out um, this year looking at six healthcare facilities in Texas and I was pretty shocked to find out that it was more than 40% of the um, prescriptions or the um, antibiotics were without prescriptions. Exactly, depending on the community and the patient groups, it can be anywhere from you know one to 66%, which is what we see in the Hispanic and Latino communities. So it's pretty, I mean, I would say it's pretty prevalent, but of course, really underreported. We don't have routine data collection on non-prescription antibiotic use. And I'm assuming it can be devastating to be using antibiotics without a prescription. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, for the individual patient, it could delay the proper diagnosis, they could get a side effect from the medication that they're taking, maybe uh, have an allergic reaction or get a type of diarrhea that we see from overuse of antibiotics called C. difficile. Or they could, if they take multiple courses, get antibiotic resistance. And in aggregate for the community, we really don't want a lot of extra antibiotics out there because, you know, if you overuse it, we're going to lose it. 100%. Yeah. And I think for the patients that I've interviewed, you know, um, most of them really know a lot about resistance, but they don't necessarily know a lot about the risks and side effects to them and to their families. So that's something that is definitely, you know, an area where we can try to intervene. And Dr. Leitner, you uh, touched on this. You've recently done the qualitative <laughs> study on this and you're going to speak about it. Can you give us a little bit more insight? So we found that with our patients, which we had a variety of different racial and ethnic groups um, that we surveyed, and people are using antibiotics without a prescription pretty frequently. Um, it's something that's happening. And the reasons why they're doing this from our qualitative work are really, there's two primary areas. One is that patients really believe that antibiotics are this cure-all. Uh, they're equivalent to like a Tylenol. Um, so they don't really necessarily know that there's risks associated with taking antibiotics over and over. And also they've had previous experience, positive experiences taking antibiotics and having their symptoms be alleviated. So, and then the second would be the healthcare system barriers. So a lot of it is because they can't get to the doctor or they can't afford the doctor's visit, they can't afford the prescription medications or even the parking. What we're working on right now, my team um, and my colleagues at Baylor, we have a patient provider communication tool that we've been developing and we're piloting it right now. And basically it has a lot of really great education about the risks to the individuals that we talk about resistance, of course, as well. We talk about appropriate antibiotic sources, which is only you know prescribed by your doctor for the condition. Uh, and then we also provide them with alternatives to some of the common symptoms that we keep seeing coming in over and over and over again. And I think we're on the right track. We just need to do a little bit, yeah, just a little bit more. Dr. Ostrowski, as we talk about um, illnesses that are resistant to the antibiotics, are there any antibiotics in the works that are going to push us up to the new edge where, okay, an infection is resistant, but we have something to combat it now? I think that you know there are antibiotics in development, but it takes many years for antibiotics to come out, and often they are for some of the more significant resistant issues. I think what we're talking about, even if there would be new antibiotics, the thing is that we don't want to continue to overuse them. So I think we really need both of these parallel things happening at the same time. So it's really inspiring. You're not just measuring that people might be inappropriately taking antibiotics, but you're finding real life ways to try to combat that because even if I were to come out with multiple different new antibiotics we're just going to lose them if we don't have the judicious use and addressing right at the source where the you know misconceptions might be for the patients really to understand that they shouldn't take them without a prescription and honestly for most um, respiratory illnesses and antibiotics isn't really even needed because they're viral. Well thank you both very much for taking the time we appreciate it. Thank you.